One of the things that makes plots really good is when we can see some context for the information. Can we see annotations that explain uh, why something happened or let us know what was going on at the time? And, uh, and so I actually have up here an example um, from one of my students um, who made this plot. And what it's looking at is how many people are walking um, on State Street over the course of a year. And what I think that makes this plot so engaging and, and kind of worth spending a lot of time on is all of these rich annotations that are on it. Um, so for example, we could see over the course of the data um, uh, um, a variety of things. Like we can see, for example, this um, Arctic wind that we had for a while. Uh, not surprisingly, many, not many people wanted to walk on State Street then. Um, we can see all of this fine detail. Um, really every week shows up here. We can see that there's more people walking each weekend. Um, we have all of these uh, little annotations at the end to tell uh, why people were out and about. For example, we have a study day. Apparently people actually don't like studying on study day. They like going to State Street. Um, Taste of Madison, uh, the most popular day of the year. Over here, this orange one, we have Halloween. And so you can really look at it and see, um, make interesting comparisons, right? Like we can see like, well, Halloween and the game day are roughly equivalent in Madison in terms of what really pulls people out. So to do annotations like this, we need to be able to draw different points or lines or highlight various regions. And, uh, and that's what I want to show today. How can we add all of these extra features um, to our plots? Let me give you one more example. So this is kind of a good plot for a presentation. It's very uh, colorful uh, and, and vibrant. Um, oftentimes, um, you might want to be writing some sort of paper. Maybe it needs to print well in grayscale. And so this is another great example. Uh, but for a very different medium. So what we have here is on the x-axis what year we're in, and on the y-axis we have how many um, uh, car crashes there are in Madison related to drunk driving. And uh, there's two lines to show whether the accidents were happening during night or day. And what's cool is that we have these two little annotations here which are showing um, this time interval during which there was this special Aldo policy uh, meant to reduce drunk driving. And so you can kind of see that drop uh, at nighttime uh, of, of nighttime drunk driving during that time interval. And so this is a great an annotation. I think that uh, the plot isn't as exciting if you can't see when that policy started and ended. Kind of surprisingly, the uh, drunk driving didn't uh, shoot back up after the policy ended, at least not much. So what am I going to do for day today? I'm not going to use real data. I'm going to just make up some fake data and then draw some things on it to demonstrate. And so what we're ultimately going to work towards is a, a plot that looks like this, where I have a couple lines. And um, instead of having a normal legend, we're going to have, um, have these uh, text labels on the right. Uh, often, if you have room, and, and by room I mean, well, how at the far right of the plot, how close are the lines to each other? Um, if, if you have room, it's better to have text right on the lines instead of having it in some sort of legend. It's uh, You don't have to like look back and forth and do this pattern matching. It's very intuitive. And so we're going to learn how to do that. Um, we're going to uh, imagine that we have some sort of a line marking a particular point in time. Maybe that's some sort of event that happened then. Um, and then we're going to have uh, show how we can shade a region of the plot to indicate, I don't know, some sort of time interval. Okay, so I'm going to head over here, and uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to create some random uh, data. And so I'm going to say um, import numpy as np, and uh, with numpy, I can say uh, uh, dot random, and then th there's a bunch of uh, functions in here um, that I can sample from distribution. So I think what I'll do is I'll sample from the normal distribution. Uh, you can see I get these uh, uh, numbers centered at zero. Um, if I wanted to, I could say, well, what is the average number and, and what is the standard deviation? I'd say how many numbers I want. But by the way, I'm typing shift tab in here when I want to pop up that little menu. And, and so uh, let's imagine I want to have some numbers centered at 10 and I don't know, a standard deviation of 20 and let's get 100 of those numbers. Um, I, I, I can do that. Um, let, let's try to get a bunch of data in a data frame. I'm going to say um, uh, import pandas as pd. And when I want to create a data frame, I can say pd.data frame. And um, 
And remember the way I can do this, I can create a dictionary, right? Where I can have um, uh, the keys are columns and then I have a bunch of data, right? So maybe I'll have an X column and a Y column. And I'm imagining that maybe I have a hundred values for each of these. So I'm gonna say I have a hundred values there, hundred values there, and let's run that. And I see, cool, I get my two columns and a hundred random values in them. And let's just mix it up a little bit. Let's say that the Y's are a bit bigger, or maybe like that. Um, and, uh, and then the other thing I wanna do is instead of just having all these independent values, I wanna imagine that maybe these things are accumulating um, over time. So I wanna apply a transformation on here. Um, in the first column, I want to, well, in the first cell of this column, I want the first value to be this 26. And the second one, I want it to be 26 plus 43. And the third one, I want to be 26 plus 43 minus 20, and so on and so forth. And the way I can do that is I can say cumulative sum, and that's going to go from top to bottom in each column. So I'm going to do that, I'm going to get some data, and maybe I'll put this all in a data frame here, like so. And uh, that's the data I'm working with. So let's just um, plot what we have and, and see how far we are. So I'm gonna say data frame dot plot dot line. And uh, there we go, I have some sort of um, plot. And, uh, and I, I was kind of expecting that second, that Y value to be bigger. Right? Maybe let me make the average there 20. Um, so it more clearly diverges. Maybe I'll also increase this a bit so it's a more interesting looking plot. Okay, there we go. Um, if I want to go back and look at where I'm aiming towards here, I see that I have these three things that I want to do. Um, one is to uh, have um, text directly on lines, or maybe directly labeling lines. Uh, the second thing I want to do is to have vertical, uh, a vertical line indicating some event. And this first one, right, this is instead of a legend, right? So I'm going to do that. And then, then the third thing I want to do is I want to have um, some uh, highlighted region, you know, indicating some sort of time interval. So that's what I'm working towards. Um, other things I want to clean up before I go too far is I want to make this font a little bit bigger. And also, in order to have room on the right-hand side, I want to uh, erase those spines. So before I dive into these th uh, things, I'm going to do that. Um, the way I make the font bigger is I say um, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and I can say plt.rc params font size equals 16. That's good. And then for the spines, uh, the spines are part, actually part of this first step. So maybe I'll just make that here. I need to erase these spines so I can have the text. So I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna say, uh, well, I'm doing my plotting here, right? So I have AX. And if I look at AX.spines, you see it's this big dictionary. I have my left, right, top, bottom. And so I could say right, dot set visible false and I'm gonna do the same thing on the top okay so that's all fine and well um, what I would like to do now is actually draw some text on top of here and the way you draw text is actually pretty simple if I have this ax I could just say ax dot text if I hit shift tab uh, I can see that three things are required. I need to know the X position of it, uh, the Y position, and then what the font actually says. And so um, the way it works is that these coordinates are in terms of uh, the data. And so uh, if I wanted to have it roughly in the center here, maybe I'll try to have the text showing up like right about here. Um, I could say X is 50, Y is 1000. So I'm gonna say 50, and a thousand, and maybe I'll just say hi for starters, and uh, and there we go. Let, let me just kind of um, bump this down so it doesn't keep jumping every time I uh, run it. Yeah, it's a little better. Okay, um, 
where should that text go? The, the text should go uh, over here, right? And uh, so l let me think a little bit about this. I, I guess, you know, this x-axis is the index of my data frame. And, and so really I want to get like the biggest value from my data frame. So if I say something like this, what is the biggest value in my data frame? It's 99. So I'm gonna put that here. And, uh, and the text jumps right over here to the right hand side. And uh, now I have to get this Y value, right? And uh, <laughs> I guess I should name my line something other than X or Y because this may be confusing as I'm talking about it. But what I could do is looking at this data frame, I really want that position to be either like this 30 or this one. So, so I'm going to say something like this. I'm going to say uh, data frame dot I location. And I want to have the last row. And you know what? Let's grab this one first, right? So that's the zeroth position. So last row, zeroth column. So I'm going to do that. And that should line up perfectly with the blue line now, which it does. And, uh, well, what text do I want to have here? Um, well, whatever that zeroth column is, right? I'm grabbing the zeroth value, so I should grab the zeroth column. So I'm going to say columns, zero, and I have x there. Um, now you can see that x does not line up quite perfectly with that line, and that's because of the alignment. There's, um, there's something called vertical alignment which is actually just abbreviated VA. And I could say bottom, which is what it is now. I could say top. You, now you can see like the, uh, you see that like the top left of that is aligned with the line. Um, or, or what I really want is center, right? And so it's just ni nicely leaned off. There's also a horizontal alignment, which I could say, uh, you know, something like right. And then the right of the text would line up with the line. Um, I think left alignment is what we want, and that's actually the default, so that looks great. Um, when I do this, I also want to draw the other one on the other line. So I can just say here, um, instead of column zero, uh, I can grab from column one, both the, both the name of column one and the last entry of column one. All right, so I can do that, and, and now I've labeled both of my lines um, this does mean now that I can get rid of my legend, right? It's not necessary anymore. So I can say down here, legend equals false. That looks good. Let me actually just throw, you know, I like to have a nice polished example. And then, so let me, let me throw some, um, uh, some more, uh, uh, some labels on here. I'm just gonna make something up. I'm gonna say set X label. Uh, I'll say that's time somehow. And I'm gonna set the Y label. And that's, I don't know, let's say quantity. Okay, so let me say fig size here. I'll say four and then two. Yeah, let me get just a tiny bit bigger. Maybe like 2.5. And I definitely have space to go wide, right? There we go. Just so we could see more, right? So that's great. So we were able to get the text on the ends and, uh, and that let us get rid of the legend, right? Because we can see what's happening now. Um, the next thing that we wanted to do was to draw a vertical line indicating some sort of event. So let, let's think about how we can draw some lines. Um, we, we saw before that we would add these um, patches if we wanted to draw a circle. We'd say something like, you know, patch equals plt.circle whatever and then we would say um we would say something like ax dot add well add artist and then we would pass in the patch object um, that's what we were doing a lot last time um instead of circle i want to draw an extra line i can say something like line 2d and if i look in here um i see that i have to pass in two things i have to pass in x data and y data and so the way it's going to work is I may have a bunch of um, X coordinates and a bunch of Y coordinates and, and, and they're going to pair off. So, so maybe what I'll do, um, let's say that on both of them, we'll start at zero, right? So I'm going to start down here in this corner right here. And um, 
then let's imagine that my next x value goes to 20 and I'll say my y value jumps up to a thousand so that would take me from here all the way up to here and then I don't know let's just say from uh, we'll go to 40 and 1000 so I'll go to 40 on the x and we'll stay at a thousand here and I get that little line I can draw off. It, you can imagine drawing a longer line um, that way. What I wanted to do is I just wanted to draw um, a vertical line at x equals 20 so that I could see um, you know, some specific point in time. And so if I want to draw a vertical line, that means I, I just have two endpoints and they're both the same, right? Uh, if I have a vertical line, both the endpoints are at the same x position. And I want to go from, well, something like this. I want to go to like this from the smallest y to the biggest y is what I'm I'm hoping for. And uh, let me actually think about how I can do that. Uh, if I actually say something like this, uh, ax dot get y limit. Uh, is it get oh get y limit get y lim something like that. There we go. Uh, that, that's giving me a tuple. That's the range of, of values that are along the x-axis. Or I'm sorry, along the y-axis. And, and so that's kind of great, right? I mean, that's the smallest y-value, the biggest y-value. And look what I was looking for up here, smallest and, and, and largest. Right, so rather than passing in this tuple here, well, I'm, I'm just going to build it automatically like that. So I do that, and I get this nice vertical line right at x equals 20. Um, let, let me try to make the line a little bit nicer. I'm going to say, well, let's make it a red line. And uh, and I can decide what line style I want. Let me, maybe I'll just pop this down to the next line. I'm going to say line style. And there's a bunch of options that I can put here. And I forget what they are. And rather than look at the documentation, I usually just put in some garbage. Because the error message... Uh, is very nice. It's like, well, that's not valid. Surprise, surprise. Uh, these are the supported values. So I could say something like a dash or a dash dash or, or maybe a colon. All these different things. So let me just play with some of these, right? I could say something like um, a colon and uh, and then I would get one style of line there. Um, if I say something like um, uh, dot dash. Oh, was it dash dot maybe? Uh, I get another style. You can kind of see it's alternating dash and dot. Maybe what I'll just do here is I'll have the dash dash style and I'll have some sort of annotation. And then I might talk about that annot annotation um, uh, in some of the accompanying text, right? Generally, like if you're creating a plot, you probably have to do some writing too for people to get much value out of it. So I could do that. Um, I could also um, have some text like this up on top of here. That's probably the best thing to do. Um, I'm not trying to do it now since it's a little bit of a redundant example. So that's great. Um, let's do this highlighted uh, region. Let's uh, let's draw a region from say uh, 60 to 80. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this down here because it's very similar and it's going to be very similar to before. I'm going to create a patch a different style of patch now. I'm going to create a patch and then I'm going to do an add artist. You see it's the same in each case, right? My patch could be a 2D line. Uh, it could be a rectangle before I saw a circle. Um, this one, since I want to highlight a region, is going to be a rectangle. And if I look here, um, I'm specifying the coordinates a little bit different now. I have um, x, y. And what is that? That has the lower left at x, y. Great, so this is an x, y coordinate where the bottom left of the rectangle is. And then I'm saying, well, how high is the rectangle? And then, or how wide is it? And how high is it? So I guess I could do this. I may have um, my X and my Y, and then I may have my width and my height. And I, what I think I want to do is I want to start at, let's say, um, let's say like 60 and zero. And uh, what width and height do I want? I, I think I said that I want the width to be uh, 20. And what should the height be? Well, I, I guess whatever my biggest um, 
y value is. So this was giving me the range of y values. So I could just grab that last one. And, uh, and you can see I have this little rectangle here and that's fine. You know, if I really want to do it properly, what I would actually do is I'd say something like this. I'd say, you know, let's start wherever that's at the bottom if I want it to run right down to the bottom. Okay, so there's lots of things I could change about the style here. Um, I could say the style is, um, you know, or not, not the style, the color, right? I'm going to say the color is gray. I could do something like that. And, and, and there's different ways that we can highlight this. Um, one way is that I could have some sort of light gray. And instead of just saying gray there, I could say something like 0 0.5 or um, the bigger, oh, the bigger the number, the closer it gets to one, the lighter the color gets. I could do that. And um, it, it turns out that whenever we're drawing something like this, well, back up. So I'm drawing a bunch of things on this um, plot, right? And everything has some coordinates, some X and some Y. There's also another coordinate called the z-coordinate that all of these things have. And uh, z has to do with, well, what's on top of other things. And so let me just show you this. So z order, um, a very small number, let's say I say like negative 3, is on the bottom, right? So when I say something like this, which was already defaulting to a small number, I can see that these orange and blue lines are on top of my box. Let's say I say like a big number, like, I don't know, 30. Now I can see that my gray is on, on top of the box. And, and so here are the two options that we can do. We can have a light color that is behind the lines. Um, what I think often looks better is to have a semi-transparent black that is on top of the lines, because it'll actually change the color of the lines a little bit. So, so let me do that. I'm gonna change this back to like 30 and make this black. So really big Z order, so it's covering everything else up right now. And then I can say um, transparency equals um, something. Actually, instead of transparency, the name for this one is uh, alpha. That means transparency. And one means I see it all. Zero means it's invisible. And something like 0 0.2, well, it, it's a semi-transparent, right? So I can see uh, I, I can see it's showing up here, right? It's it's kind of, uh, not only do I see the highlighted region, but I can see how it makes those uh, lines a little bit darker. Um, and, and so that's good. Um, another thing I want to talk about here, so that, that, that was an example, right? And, and so end to end, I made all of these um, annotations that I wanted to make. Um, something I want to talk about to review a little bit from the last video is coordinate systems. Right, when I'm saying 60 or 20, that's in terms of my data, right? That's my uh, coordinate system. And the way that works, right, is there's a default here. And the default was transform equals ax.transform data. I run that and, uh, <laughs> and it makes no difference, right? Because that was my default. Um, if I wanted to, just for the sake of example, right? I mean, this was kind of a complete thing that looked nice, but let me, let me just review a little bit about these um, uh, transformers that let me deal with different ax uh, axes. Um, let, me, let me actually make like a, a red thing now. Um, if I want to do this not in terms of the data um, uh, coordinates, but if I want to do it in terms of, well, what area am I dealing with? I could say something like this. I could say something like, uh, trans uh, axes and in that case instead of going from uh, instead of going from 0 to 100 I'd be going from 0 to 1 and instead of going from 0 to 1500 I'd be going from 0 to 1 in that direction too and, and so if I run this right now I mean it doesn't show anything because 60 is you know way off here to the right hand side so that doesn't do anything um, but I could do something like this. I could say I want to go from 0 to, um, I don't know, 0 0.5. Oh, no, okay, wait, sorry. <laughs> Let me remind, remind myself what this is, right? I have the x and y, and then I have a width, and I have a height. Okay, so I could start in the bottom left corner, and I could say I want it to fill up half 
of the axis region. And I can say, well, I want the height to be the whole thing. And I could do that, and now I'm covering all of this stuff um, as well. I guess like a, an alpha uh, with a red is kind of a pinkish color, right? So I could get this pinkish um, uh, highlight that goes to half of the axis area. Right, so different coordinate systems, right? This is going to be the default in most cases based on the data. But if I want to do another coordinate system, I'm certainly able to by passing in this transform. Okay, so I'll leave there looking at the code.